what is the way to import only static members of a class static members of a class so we can import using using a statement import statement import class name dot star if you want to assign it to some any other variable for example i have a, a class like uh, let's say interest rate and there is like a home loan interest rate so i want to assign it to my local class variable let's say interest rate is equal to so if we can import directly like class name dot variable name okay so i think you got confused there you can use static import yes if you want to uh, import all the variables then we can mention directly class name dot star at import statement only and if you want a specific variable then we, we can mention specific variable as well in import statement okay. have you used inject or annotate at the rate inject yeah uh, inject i know but currently i am not using inject is to inject the value or something somewhere uh, not value but being B. Not currently I am using, but yeah, I know at the rate inject is there. What is the difference between unique key and primary key? Unique key it won't uh, allow the user uh, to use the same value inside it, and the primary is both not null and uh, unique. Means no two datas will be same and uh, not null. How you are writing the test cases in your code? So no, we are using JUnit four. So basically there are two types of test cases. Uh, one I mentioned priorly, which is continuous integration testing where you test an application from start to end mm -hmm. which is which checks the entire life cycle basically in which we mock the service call we mock a service calling another service it might happen that your one service is calling another service and you need to find a data so basically how an application actually behaves the way you will create a data you will be mocking all the calls you will be inserting your data inside a database how an application would do and then you will be checking with the asserts if everything is fine you will pass the test case you will remove the data and it's okay and the another one is we call it as a j unit which is specifically not a cit which is an unit test it is specific to the methods or the services which we have written as a business logic we'll be writing a easy mocks we'll be creating a dummy tos and datas and we'll be testing those for the asserts which we think we have introduced as a part of uh, current implementation and our code coverage has to be 80 percent and above and we have to write a j unit for that to coverage the uh, check the coverage of the code as well to have above 80 percent okay so any any framework like uh, test ng mokito rest assured has been used uh mokito i have used previously in my previous organization here we use j unit runner uh, and we are directly integrated with our current and for automation we are using lean fta but uh, for Currently, we are using JUnit and uh, which is configured with our existing framework. What is marker interface? A marker is an uh, interface which does not contain any methods. It's a blank interface. It is in two, two to three types marker interface. One is an uh, clone interface, second is an uh, serializable interface, and third is an, uh, I think, um, remote map something interface. Third one is a. Can you tell me what is aggregation? Aggregation means tight coupling, right? Tight coupling has a relationship, you can say. So, what type of databases you have used? In Most of the time, I have worked with the uh, Postgres database. Most of the time, recently I I am interacting with Oracle as well. But most of the time, I have used the Postgres SQL database. And for this period of time, I used the around two years with the MongoDB as well. MongoDB, yeah, MongoDB as database. So, what do you prefer? Uh, In which database uh, you are Mimis most comfortable? There is no preference as such me because I have written the functions in Oracle or Stored Procedure or functions and queries in Postgres as well. And uh, no, I have no preference as such. Uh, most of the time I was work with Postgres as well. So because of that, I'm all, I could be less uh, inclined towards that. But other than that, I have no preference as such. Because I have worked with the various uh, databases. So sometimes earlier uh, there was a DB2 in the current project. We migrated to Oracle. So for a moment of time, I was with the DB2. So kind of I worked so no preference as such from my side. And suppose your application context is not loading. It is getting failed and you are getting error. So what is the first thing you will check? According to you, what can be the issue? I mean, your Spring Boot application is not starting. Yeah, application context is not loading. This is the error message you are getting. Something you need to check whether your application context is in your class path or not. Basically, it could be there. Mostly, it could be there. If it is not there, you have to ensure that whether it's loaded in your class path or not. 
have you used any spring data or jpa that's what i said right uh, our current application doesn't hits your database directly it, we have underlying services but i know that we can use hibernate jpa as your application or you have an inbuilt h2 database that way you can configure database in your spring boot application by means of that repository uh, what is that annotation and uh, configure your database related things in the application properties file entries like dialog Username, password, all those things you configure it in application the properties. And uh, regarding the crude operation, you create a class, repository class by maintaining at, by mentioning at repository annotation, and then extends your crude uh, crude Good. Uh, yeah crude operations. You order crude yeah. operations. I don't know. Yeah. So in between, we have all the find all, find, uh, delete, everything goes there. Save. What about S3? Are you using S3 as well? S3 bucket. We are just started. Not aware more. on that but we are started the that clusters s3 buckets kinases that piece we are started so is your angular part is also a microservice in your project or it is like a different architecture so currently uh, there is no specific thing as in ui part uh, for angular we are just exposing services as of now so i have uh, worked with an application so not in this company in previous company where we have consumed the rest services inside the angular so it was uh, using the adm plugin adf plugin which is alfresco related to alfresco data processing mm. uh, so i have worked with it where we can consume the rest services so suppose my piece of code can throw any kind of exception it can throw file not found exception it can throw unsupported encoding ssl exception anything and then i am catching io exception then i am catching runtime exception then i am catching file not found exception will that work is this sequence i would be can you repeat the question again so you are getting io exception or so at the time of catching the exception first i am writing runtime exception then i am writing io exception will that work uh, no so what are the things you need to take care while writing the sequence of while writing the catch blocks the so first you need you consider which exception you may get so like you need to write the child exceptions first then the parent exception like you need to like write like suppose if you are writing uh, arithmetic if you are getting like 100 by 0 so definitely you will get arithmetic exception so first you need to handle arithmetic exception then the exception uh, class exception main exception or runtime exception like that first you need to write your child exception then the parent exception If you are writing the parent exception first and the, the child exception next, you'll get a compile time error saying that uh, the automatic exception is already handled by exception class. So suppose one of your microservice taking more load compared to other microservices. So what you have to run your application is smooth in that scenario. One is taking more time than another. Basically, it won't wait for the other one. If it is taking more time to load, so the best way to improve to no, increase a heap is, memory is a yeah, it normal. Yeah, it is taking way, more data load. It is like a, by improving the heap uh, memory, it will have some of the components. So otherwise, we have to refactor it. by using a performance yeah but increasing the heap memory has its own limitation you can't increase the heap memory yes. after a certain point so what you will do yeah tell me do you use any kind of load balancer or create a multiple instance of that microservice basically if we have faced this kind of issue in our previous project so like we will have some like jvm analyzer JVM analyzer is a tool. We will it will comprise the whole uh, microservice application and give gives out the report like what are the major uh, objects which take time to load or what are the instance, what are the iteration or what are the variable it has uh, more initialization. It will give the whole report based on the report. We will uh, do a performance in our report which I faced in a previous project. So JVM analyzer, I think the report uh, the tool is. So uh, have you used this Java date and time API? Date and time API. Yeah, we have used uh, and uh, we have separate. Uh, we have created separate uh, project with uh, sanitization. So to validate our uh, JSON request at the time of uh, control layer, we have validated. So at the time of validation, we have used uh, Java uh, date and time. Before going into service layer, we have capturing the validation in the controller layer by using at valid. So uh, for that at valid, we have created some separate project with the sanitization. So at the sanitization, we have uh, used uh, Java at uh, date API to validate uh, the date field. So can you call a stored procedure from Java using Spring framework? Yes, I think so. I have not called it, but uh, in our uh, In normal JDBC, if we can, we 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 in a legacy app, 
in my spring application basically i have not called any procedure but we can do it so there is a prepare call in the jdbc template which we can use it how will you implement concurrency in your java program the concurrency the concept we are using for the uh, asynchronous whenever we are trying to uh, process the multiple what we can say the threads so that the individual threads will performing the different different tasks so let's say there will be a, a call to api and that api need to perform the different operations with the inputs so like one call it is taking to the db operation and one it at the same time it is trying to access the other downstream uh, api or application and getting pulling the data from there and similarly if you want to do some other processing on that data so that we can do with the this multi-threading asynchronous concept that comes into the concurrent